I'm Dana Shove, editor of Civil War Times Magazine, with Melissa Wynn, director of photography for the magazine, and we're back for our last First Monday Facebook Live broadcast for today, and we're again in Colonial Williamsburg. Our first uh, Facebook Live this morning, we were at the east end of Duker Gloucester Street, and we've sort of moved to the west end of town now, and behind us would be the big green if you've ever been to Williamsburg, so you have an idea where we're located. Now I want to talk about the, the house behind me. That is the St. George Tucker House. That house was built in 1719 and at some point it was actually moved to this location. And it was owned, purchased by a man named St. George Tucker. He was born in London, lived in Bermuda, and then came here to Williamsburg, bought the house and refurbished it and enlarged it. So it doesn't look like it did when it was built, but it's definitely an 18th century structure. And it's one of the original properties here in Williamsburg. St. George Tucker is considered sort of one of the forgotten founding fathers. He was a friend of Jefferson and Washington. He was a well-known Virginia jurist. He wrote a lot of, helped write a lot of Virginia state laws. He served with Washington during the Revolutionary War. And in 1796, St. George Tucker wrote a treatise calling for the gradual emancipation of slaves in Virginia. He thought slavery should be abolished and slaves should be emancipated. Now, we haven't really discussed this on our Facebook Live broadcast, but slavery was the primary cause of the Civil War. I know that's somewhat controversial, but the facts of the historical record bear that out. And you can see the tension over slavery sort of evolving in the United States in issues like this discussion of emancipation that occurred in Virginia in 1790s. Now, the same time that St. George Tucker writes this treatise, Eli Whitney, a New England Yankee, of course, has developed the cotton gin which is a machine that will help make the processing of cotton more efficient and profitable. And of course, for cotton plantations, at least at the, in the mindset of the time, you need large numbers of slaves. So just when they begin to discuss perhaps emancipating slavery, the tobacco soils are wearing out, is it really a profitable institution? The cotton gin comes along, changes that equation, and there's sort of a, a boom in, in the uh, increase of slavery and the talk of emancipation drops off, particularly in the state of Virginia and other states. St. George Tucker had a son named Nathaniel Beverly Tucker. Nathaniel Beverly Tucker wrote a book in 1836 called The Partisan Leader. It was a novel. It was in two volumes. And in The Partisan Leader, Nathaniel Beverly Tucker predicted the Civil War. The novel was about seven states from the South that seceded from the United States to form the Southern Confederacy. Virginia was not one of the states that seceded, but sort of the hero of the story was the partisans that were in Virginia trying to encourage the state to secede, okay? So we have the abolitionist father, or at least proposed abolition or emancipation, his son is predicting a civil war. Nathaniel Beverly Tucker had a number of sons, one of which was named St. George Tucker, after his father. St. George Tucker lived in Ashland, Virginia, and he uh, had a uh, male academy that he ran, like a male a school for, for boys. In 1861, when the Civil War breaks out, he will close the academy, and among his students, he will form the Ashland Grays, a Confederate militia unit, and he will be the captain of that unit. It will eventually be incorporated in the 15th Virginia Infantry. And during the Seven Days Campaign, when Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia drives George McClellan's Army of the Potomac back down the peninsula and away from Richmond, the 15th Virginia is actively involved. So St. George Tucker II is fighting over this area where his heritage really was formed. He will be promoted to Lieutenant Colonel of the regiment, and he is known as a, a valiant fighter. He was well respected by his men and, and regarded as a really good officer. Unfortunately for him, he will get sick and will die of disease in 1863 during the war. But it's interesting in these three generations of Tuckers, you can see the evolution of thought regarding slavery. It goes from possibly emancipating to predicting a civil war to actually having someone, the grandson of someone who proposed emancipation ends up fighting for the Confederacy during the Civil War. And you can see this transition. It's very interesting. And that Civil War connection all comes back to this house here in Colonial Williamsburg. More pragmatically, this house was occupied by Confederate wounded after the May 5th, 1862 Battle of Williamsburg, Virginia. 
Nathaniel Beverly Tucker's daughter, Cynthia, was in the house at the time. It was her and other women. All the men were off fighting for the Confederacy. There was no men there. And she recalled the, it, the wounded coming into their house during the rain of May 5th, sleeping in the house, and then getting up early the next morning to get out before the Federals arrived. And she talked about listening to the Battle of Williamsburg, the thunder of the cannonry, and the rattle of the musketry just to the east. So, and then on May 6th, I should say, she talks about the Federal Army moving in and taking over Williamsburg and putting it under martial law. So, I hope you've enjoyed our first Monday Facebook Live broadcast this time and these Civil War connections to Williamsburg. If you're interested in more history of Civil War Williamsburg, there's an author named Carson Hudson, and he's written a number of books on him. One is simply called Civil War Williamsburg. You can check out and learn more about that. So the next time you come here and enjoy this fantastic place, which I hope you do, you could maybe have read that book and you could kind of connect the Civil War to some of these 18th century buildings that you'll see in this beautifully restored town. Our next Facebook Live, first Monday, is gonna be November 4th, and I hope you'll join us then. We're gonna be back in Maryland, and we're gonna have some fantastic human interest stories. We're gonna talk about a female African-American slave. We're gonna talk about a murder that occurs on the Potomac, uh, near the Potomac River at Pointer Rocks, Maryland. And I think we're gonna get a chance to go watch some Civil War archeology span in process. So I really hope you'll join us on November 4th. Thank you very much for joining with us today. I hope you really appreciate it. I, I, I hope you've appreciated what we've talked about, and I appreciate you coming and viewing with us. This is Dana Schoaf and Melissa Lynn from Civil War Times Magazine, signing off from the St. George Tucker House along in beautiful Colonial Williamsburg.